Welcome to Closer to Truth. I'm Robert Kuhn. Great science requires great questions. So for this program, we've brought together five world-renowned scientists and thinkers, and we've asked them to make a list. Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astrophysicist at Princeton, is director of the Hayden Planetarium of the American Museum of Natural History. Neil, you are what I'd call a public scientist in, in a grand tradition, a professor of astrophysics at Princeton uh, and director of the Hayden Planetarium, which many of us got our first exposure to the universe. And has, my first night sky. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> very <laughs> terrific. Uh, w why are the, the grand questions of science important for the public? Well, not all scientists ever have the privilege of answering alone the grand questions of science, but it's the grand questions that are the carrot, the intellectual carrot that's put out there that actually seduce people to wanting to do science in the first place and they keep you going all throughout the journey. Mm. And often the, the fun of doing science is not even answering that great question, but it's, it's the path you take along the way. Mm. And it's that path that gets you closer to the machinery of how the world works. And, and that, that great question's always out there. The great question's, and once you solve that, there's gonna be another question <laughs> on the other side of it. So don't, don't, don't be fooled by, Some by how close so. you are. Yeah. Neil, you've looked at uh, philosophically the C Copernican principle uh, as it relates to, to physics. Uh, t tell us a little bit about that. Well, <clears throat> we've known since Copernicus that, uh, just to remind people, Copernicus sort of restored the sun <laughs> at the, as the center of the then known universe, previously understood or believed to be Earth. Mm. And that dislodged human perception of ourselves and our own importance and made it just one of many other planets, mm -hmm. uh, a family of planets mm -hmm. in the solar system. And then moving onward, we then learn that the sun is not the center of the galaxy. It's just one of billions, hundreds of billions of stars in a galaxy, which is one of perhaps a hundred billion other galaxies. And so cosmic discovery has been this long, uh, many steps towards demonstrating that anytime we thought we were special, we we're in fact not. Do you think there's a limit to that? No, actually. I think that'll just continue. I mean, even to the very chemistry of our bodies, the, the fact that we're carbon-based life. Carbon is, is one of the most abundant elements in the, in, in the galaxy. Formed in the crucible of... Formed in the crucible of, of high-mass stars that then blew, exploded and spread their guts across the galaxy. All this stuff that makes planets and life and, and, and people. And, and so the commonality... And by the way, this is quite a testament to the, to the universality of the laws of physics. Mm -hmm. Uh, without that, we'd have, we'd, we'd have nothing to study. If, if in this room, at this moment in time, the laws of physics were one thing and then there was something random 10 minutes from now, we'd all be out of a job. That's a fundamental principle of science. It's a fundamental principle, but we don't, we don't just wish it were true. Evidence has mm -hmm. demonstrated throughout eons that it is. What, what has happened here, and this is very important, is that we have merged seamlessly from the questions mm -hmm. of physics to the questions of astrophysics and, and origins. I think and, that's a trend that's going to continue. And, and that is There's a fundamental happens. trend of what's happened yes. in, in, in yes. science over that's the right. last... Uh, 30 30 years, 30 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. You can't neglect the fact that, and I bring by analogy our study of the solar system, for the longest time we only knew of the eight or nine planets in our own solar system, so theorists come up with models that explain why you have a big planet here and a small planet here and rings here and icy <laughs> objects there, and you construct your whole paradigm based on an example of one. And that can be so limiting when, when just by looking over the other side of the fence, and we haven't found life elsewhere, but the fact that you have another example, we have other solar systems out there that now a whole new field is born called comparative, plan yeah, yeah. comparative planetology. Francisco? Neil, but that's the difference precisely. You, you deal with relatively simple systems that can be repeated. Organisms don't get repeated. I don't expect to find human beings or intelligent life anywhere in the universe. But don't you think you I have enough diversity questions? right here, and I want to understand what is happening here. I have all my universe, as many as I want for now, <laughs> in this planet. Okay. Let, let's, really let's stay on the universe. Yeah. Right. We've <laughs> talked about life. I uh, want to talk about some other things, yeah. like the expansion of the universe. This is a great question. Mm -hmm. Neil, tell us about what's happening with the expansion Well, we're of the expanding, and we've been expanding. <laughs> 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 and it looks like it's a one-way trip. Mm -hmm. For the longest while, theorists felt philosophically that it, uh, uh, a better universe would be one in which we would expand and then recollapse and then expand again because that took away the worrisome issue of whether there was only ever one beginning mm. to the universe. But it looks like we're on a one-way trip. And, and it's recent, accelerating. Recent evidence shows that it's not only expanding, it's accelerating. So, and the temperature of the universe is dropping, the, the density of matter is becoming less and less, and we're headed to 
what we call a thermal death, where everything is the same temperature, and that temperature would be very cold, close to absolute zero. Tim, take us in a more complex... That's in a few hundred billion years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried. Okay. The show's only 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know where the water came from? Yeah, well, yeah. The way yeah. I know a place where it could have come yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got comets streaming throughout yeah. the solar system, mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they got tons of water in them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's one way we could have brought much of the oceans. There's some problems with some isotope ratios that still are unresolved. But uh, I, I, I beg to differ that questions related to Earth are in the category of the big questions because Earth is just one planet. And when I think of big questions, I think of questions that apply everywhere uh, to, the, to you know, the, the future evolution of the entire universe. If you and had a glacier coming down against oh, you, yeah, no, 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 it's I, a big that's right. question. It's don't a, don't a, get me wrong. I lo you know, Earth, that's our planet. You okay. know, well, I, well I let, like me, Earth. let me give you one that is, in fact, generic, and that's the origin of magnetic fields in planets. Good, okay? there you go. You okay. know, some planets have magnetic fields, others don't. The Earth's magnetic field reverses every 100,000 years or something like that. We don't yes. understand how that happens. That's right. Okay? There you go. That's a big question, there right? But I still think the climate is a grand question because we really care about the answer. I guess what I, what I try to do is uh, I would think of it not so much as climate challenges on Earth, but generalizing it to planetary climates yeah. and what, you know, why d does Jupiter's red spot uh, uh, survive? Why does yeah. it survive for but, 300 years? Sure, but you may get very different answers on different planets. You know, it's going to be like biology that there's a different answer in each system. You'd hope not, but, but, but that's something yeah. itself to know yeah, if, in fact, right. it requires a different explanation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's some questions I'd, I'd want to risk wasting my question on because they may be dead ends. But the one that's not a dead end is what is the nature and overall properties of dark matter in the universe, mm -hmm. which is ubiquitous. We are dumb stupid about it. We don't know what we know it's there because everything feels its gravity, but nothing nothing else about it and can be felt. There's more of it there's than more, what we can see. There's more of it of than all the kind of matter we've ever we know that we're made of. So uh, it's it's that's the frontier.